Why did this happen and what's the cause of SVB going bust in this way? We'll start with basic principles. At their core, banks are in the business of managing risk. They take in customer deposits and they pay interest on those deposits. Then they invest those funds at a higher yield to make a spread. And there are risks that have to be carefully balanced and managed on both sides of that equation. And those risks are super dynamic. They can evolve over time, like say Fed rates, or in today's hyper-connected mediaverse, of which you are a significant part, they can convulse almost spontaneously. Depositors can pull funds at any time, and banks have to manage investments for both yield and liquidity. And that balance is every bank's primary challenge. For SVB, this challenge was particularly acute as their deposit base and their loan portfolio were heavily concentrated in the VC tech startup ecosystem. At the, at the height of the recent tech boom in 2021, SVB was awash in deposits while interest rates were near zero. Uh, and at the time, the Fed messaging was that rates were going to be uh, kept pretty low. So SVB invested heavily in long dated securities, over $90 billion, mostly in MBS with maturities greater than 10 years. So again, just take that in because that's a huge bet. They held these securities in their balance sheet as held to maturity, which means they were signaling they had no intent to sell these uh, to meet liquidity needs. And because of that, they were not required to reflect any mark to market adjustments on these securities and their financials. That's a huge bet on the sustainability of low rates and continued tech momentum. Then 2022 happened and momentum flipped on both. The Fed changed course toward aggressive rate hikes to try to staunch inflation and VC funding slowed and many once cash happy tech startups became cash burners. And so for SVB, that meant deposits shrunk, interest expenses ballooned and their giant investment portfolio, which now have yields way less than the Fed rate, uh, was worth less and less. At the end of 22, they reported $91 billion of held to maturity securities with the va but actual value of $76 billion. That $15, $15 billion gap was bigger than their market cap for most of the fourth quarter. So that mark to market gap and the fear about what that gap could mean about the bank's soundness is what ultimately led to the bust. SVB's depositors, which were super concentrated in this hyper-connected VC tech ecosystem, started pulling their funds in mass. SVP had to sell some of those securities, which they had held to maturity at a hefty loss to meet those demands. But then that loss led to a capital hole and they tried to fill unsuccessfully that capital hole with a last minute $2 billion capital raise. When that didn't materialize, depositors panicked and attempted to withdraw over $40 billion in a single day. And when SVB couldn't meet those withdrawal, withdrawal requests, they had no choice but to hand the keys to the FDIC. It's a tough story. It's a, it's a tough story. Uh, Jackie, I do have to ask you, you know, a lot of people are suggesting that there's been quite a few PR and strategic communications mistakes here. How do you think about that, given what we just heard from Chris? Well, there was one dynamic that I thought was very unusual, and I think part of the straw that broke the camel's back, and SVB went out and made an announcement that they were doing a $500 million capital raise with General Atlantic and doing a um, market offering the following morning. And so they basically had a billion and a half dollar hole they were going to fill. Ordinarily, a company can go out, announce overnight that they're going to go do a deal in the market, raise some capital. But when you're a bank and you're already being rumored to have capitalization issues around uh, deposits, it immediately created a panic dynamic. And there's a psychology element as a bank where no one wants to be the last man standing in that bank with your deposits as the FDIC shows up in an illiquid situation. And so that announcement did the exact opposite of what it intended to do, and it created immediate fears around the tech community who started sending notes around to each other almost in an instant that said, anyone worried, should we be pulling funds? And immediately the answer was, yes, I don't want to be the last guy standing. And so as much as there is an incredible amount of support for SVB, the psychology dynamic of that situation created a run on the bank. And so by the following morning, by 11 a.m., 
it's fair to say that's the moment when the chalk strikes and $40 billion was already being demanded out of SVB by institutions that had significant amount of, amounts of capital there. That is a really unusual order of operation. They should have raised the money, made the announcement that they raised the money and that they were in great position. And so that dynamic and the advice they were getting in that situation, very unusual. So I, I listened to, to both of the explanations there and the different kind of sides, but one being kind of the systemic kind of capital allocation decisions and then the PR and strategic communications decisions. And my question is like, is this a symptom of like systemic risk crystallizing or is this a series of specifically bad decisions being made in screw ups? Well, look, with both Silvergate and SVP coming to a head in a single week, it would be naive to suggest there isn't some broader risk to consider here. One data point that's been reference, referenced quite often in the last few weeks uh, came from the FDIC's latest quarterly report on the health of the insurance banking system. That came out the end of February. And the report noted that banks' aggregate unrealized losses on securities remain, in their words, elevated at $620 billion in Q4. In fact, throughout 2022, these unrealized losses were materially higher than at any other time in the last 15 years, by multiples of three to six, depending on the year. A number of banks have securities in their portfolios that lost values as REIT shot up, obviously. But we really need to do a double click on that data to determine how broadly those losses really are spread. Not every bank is sitting on a huge pile of unrealized losses. So we really need to understand that better. As for specific screw ups, Hindsight is 2020, and no one likes a Monday morning quarterback. SVB made a risk assessed investment decision in 2021. Then they doubled down on that decision in 2022. Even as the rate environment changed and their very concentrated depositor base saw increasing headwinds. In hindsight, that bet was a bust. But would SVB have been able to ride out the investment losses had their depositors not gotten spooked and jumped ship all at once? We'll never know. Yeah. I mean, you do have to think like, what could they have said differently that would have made the venture capital community who is on instant communication with each other and interestingly able to communicate in a very concentrated way? You know, a portfolio can be a thousand companies communicated to in one message. And um, you have to ask the question, like, as I sit here and try to reflect on what I would have done differently, I would have changed order of operations. I would have communicated differently, but I'm not sure anything different could have stopped the pull of deposits out in an instant because people were basically making the assessment that there was a non-zero chance of risk. And in a non-zero chance of risk, why not pull? 